joining us today on Around the Peninsula. I'm Maria Soraya. Well, today we are celebrating not one, but two big anniversaries here on the Hill. The first one is right here on the grounds of City Hall. We continue our 50th anniversary for the city of Rancho Palos Verdes. It's a concert in the park. And then we will be going down the hill just a little ways to celebrate 100 years. That's right, a very special anniversary for the Palos Verdes Peninsula. But first up, it's concert in the park. So let's take a look. You never know where you're going to find our mayor, but she is right here on the grounds of City Hall celebrating the 50th anniversary with an amazing concert in the park. Yeah, I love this concert. This is a, a band called, it's called Remix Band, and it's from the 70s, it does music from the 70s and 80s. They're not really from the 70s and 80s. I'm from the 70s and 80s. But the music is wonderful. Isn't it? It's so much fun. I know people were even out here early, and there is there are a lot of people here enjoying this. Yeah, I think there are even more than last year that came to the concerts. And maybe people are kind of getting the word. But it's, it's fun. I'm sorry it's a little gray, but maybe that keeps it cool. But the people have come. The kids are here. You know, it's just wonderful because the kids can run around. Nobody cares. You know, the music's great. Everybody claps along, sings along, dances along. It's just fun to be out and to see friends that have come as well. And I think it's great because really in just a couple of weeks we will have our big 4th of July celebration. It's a little later this year because we have got a very special drone performance later in the evening. So we're just getting them warmed up, Barbara. Yeah, I think it's important for people to remember that this year it's not going to start until 3. And it's starting later because we have the drone light show at night. And that's going to be exciting, you know. Well, thank you for spending a few minutes with us today out here at the concert in the park. It's a good time for all, that's for sure. Thank you, Mayor. Well, I appreciate all the people coming out and for you folks being here. It's just a great summer afternoon. Now, it was 100 years ago today that Palos Verdes held their very first real estate rally. And to commemorate that very special historical day, today there was an event called Doors Open Peninsula, and we were there. So let's catch up with Monique Sugimoto, host of History on the Hill, and she's going to tell us all about it. Thank you everyone for uh, turning out today and um, participating in this. This is, um, has been a several year project to get this going to recognize 
the, the history and just what a special place the Palos Verdes Peninsula is. We hope that you have had an opportunity to go out and explore the peninsula. And if you haven't, don't worry. You can. A lot of our sites are always open, so you can go and take your commemorative booklets with you and go in to visit them. Well, we are celebrating two very special anniversaries today. We have finally made it to Doors Open Peninsula, and joining us is our very good friend, Monique Sugimoto. Monique, this has been, I know, a labor of love for you, but it is a hit. Tell us about today. Um, it has been, um, well, it's been a long time in the making, and it's been a lot of fun. Um, I just heard from you that there were a lot of people over at Rancho Palos Verde City Hall, which I am thrilled about because that was one of the places that um, I hear about all the time and that people really wanted to go and visit. Um, and we've gotten a big turnout here at Malaga Cove School, um, and people are really <laughs> into their passports and getting them stamped. Um, we've got the mini therapy ponies here, which are adorable. So yeah, they're totally cute. Tell us a little bit about how the process works today. People come in, they pick up the map, and we'll show that in a minute. Yeah, um, so people will come in. Um, some of them already have their brochures because they've picked them up already from um, another site, um, or they can pick one up here. Um, we have, since we are the first stop, I mean, we're not a number, but there is a dope stamp, so we'll stamp them up right here. We explain that there are three other sites within walking distance that they can go to from here, so we they can go and see those. Um, and then they can also tour around inside and um, come and meet some of our community groups. And the PV Symphonic Band is here. The band is here, and I know that you're also going to have some dignitaries coming. Tell us about that. That's right. So we're going to have um, representatives from each of the cities, either the mayor or a council member coming. Um, we also have um, somebody coming from uh, Senator Ben Allen's office and also from um, Janice Hahn's office to give us some certificates. And um, the uh, big one is going to be at 1230 with Assembly Member Al Muratsuchi, who's going to be here as well with the resolution. So that's we're really honored to have our, um, our electeds um, and our legislators here with us. You know, something I think is so unique about this event is people will pick these up or they'll download them from online. And this is something they could really do any time is just to see maybe not all of the places, but many of them. That's exactly right. So a lot of our sites here in the peninsula are open already. So my husband was saying, yeah, it's not really a doors open, but um, for some of the places that aren't available, that are only available today, that's really a lot of fun. Um, but yes, you can go off and, um, and do it later on. You don't have to hit every single place today. Um, you can do it, uh, you know, put it on your bucket list and go and see it later on. Very true. And then um, as far as everything going on here today, how many people do you have working here today? How many volunteers? Gosh, um, that I would have to ask Sarah about. Um, hey, Sarah, how many volunteers do we have working today? <laughs> we have today? about 20 in addition to probably another 15 more staff and support. Wow. Yes. So you <laughs> have quite a few, and it's a beautiful day today as well. It finally, the sun it finally did. came out after yeah. weeks and weeks of, uh, of rain every morning. I don't think we had rain yet today, so this is no, fabulous. And we, yes, we're enjoying that. And then uh, and there's many booths. How did you sort of designate who was going to come? Um, you know, we had um, interest from the community. So uh, those uh, dope participating sites, for instance, the Palos Verdes Land Conservancy, um, they are they are having two of the different sites, and they wanted to come and have a booth. And we said, absolutely. So our dope sites can be here. Uh, and then we just put a call out, and a community member or community groups contacted me and asked, can they put can they be here? And we said, absolutely. Yeah. And something. Also, I was just talking to somebody. They said that you don't have food here, but you're encouraging people to go and eat locally while they're on their tour, which I think is fantastic. That's absolutely right. So we have we indicated on the brochure maps um, where the food sites were, so people can go to Malaga Cove, over to Lunata Bay, even Marilust, um, Golden Cove, over in RPV. So we try to um, have people encourage people to go and see, you know, the, those sites. We, al we always promote shop local. Shop local. Local, eat local. Yes, yeah, absolutely. absolutely. Yes. And then you'll be here today from what time to what time? So we uh, started here open to the public at 9, and we'll be here until about 4 o'clock. Very good. Well, this has been just such a successful event, but you have worked very hard to get here. You know, it has been um, really a lot of fun, and I have to give a shout-out to RPV. Um, Ara and Karina were my first uh, people that I approached with this idea, and they supported it wholeheartedly, and it really gave me the sense 
chance that this could actually happen. And, you know, that was last year. It was over a year ago that we had that initial conversation. And with RPV having its 50th and this is the 100th, I just think it's, um, I don't know, it's just really great. And so I really have to thank RPV for doing this. So 100 years. So what that really is, is on June 17th, 1923, there was a real estate rally that was held on this exact site. Um, so it is 100 years to the day of that real estate um, rally. They didn't sell anything on that day, but they were just opening up this grand vision for the peninsula. Called, it was the Palos Verdes Project, and they invited the public to come in. And so that main photograph that we have with all of the Model Ts and all of the different cars, that was right here. And that, that just, to me, is, is just really special. Yeah. Very special that we can actually be on the grounds where that took place. Exactly. Just And we have that big, um, I blew up the photograph so people can see that photo and kind of experience it. You can see the eucalyptus grove in the background of the photo. And if you just turn around, you can see the eucalyptus grove. It's still here. To be a part of history, I think, is just so amazing. And what a unique experience for everyone. I hope so. I hope yeah. the public um, really enjoys it and learns, uh, you know, something about our community because it's a pretty special community. Literally two days ago, I got this wonderful Doors Open Peninsula 2023 commemorative booklet. And so I recommend that everyone get one. Of course, come to this event today. Hopefully, people are here. Um, and so we had a reception, and that was at the La Venta Inn, which everyone knows is in Palos Verdes Estates, so one of our four sisters cities that are here on the peninsula. Then I did notice that on the other side of the next page there was the Nike missile site which I bet a lot of people in Rancho Palos Verdes have not been to this and then we're opening our doors for people to come see that and to get the stamp and I, maybe even our city managers there are personally stamping. Well, and, and just to let you know it's been packed there today. Oh okay it pa I'm sure it has I mean it's super awesome. Uh, I hadn't until I got on the city council I had never seen that site myself and yeah, it's pretty awesome, yeah. especially those that remember the Cold War and, and the threat of, uh, you know, the Soviet Union. And and so um, it's they show you, you do they actually let people down in there. Yeah. Oh, so yeah, people need to go down there. And and this whole booklet is full of all these amazing places. And I don't know how anyone could possibly with a full life of whatever could ever go see this. But it's it's pretty neat because you can read about everything here. And it would take a while. But again, something you can keep at home and say, hey, today. Today maybe we'll venture out and see another place on there that you've never been to before. But what a creative way to see the peninsula, yes? Our people in the library district are super creative, um, you know, and that, that's why we love them. It really is an absolutely fabulous event. We've gotten the most amazing weather, yeah, a little breezy, but I think we're all handling it. And here at the booth, we're talking about what the library has to offer now and specifically over the summer. We've got some amazing summer reading programs for for the kids, for the teens, for adults. Um, as you know, our teen annex is now open and we're getting the kids after school enjoying playing games and socializing with each other. We've got board games up there and wonderful teen collections. So we're seeing just great use of that space now. We're so excited to have it. Um, lots of great events over the summer. One of the things that we're really talking about is a new program where we have where we're lending out state park passes. So in collaboration with the California State Library, we now have passes to California State Parks. And you can check them out at the library, just like you'd check out a book, and then you get access to 200 different California State Parks. How fun is that? It's amazing. So if you're thinking over the summer of maybe taking summer. a vacation and... <laughs> Somewhere there's a park. And, and, and going to one of the California yeah. State Parks, you know, come to the library and check it out. That's um, really cool. They do get checked out, but if they're all checked out, you can actually put a hold on them. And so Great. a wonderful opportunity for the family to get out and explore our California State Parks. Now, is that program new to, like, the, the, the state or just to the area? It is fairly new to the entire state. Um, through the California State Library, in conjunction with the state parks, they've offered these opportunities to public libraries across California. And we're fortunate to have quite a few of the passes, so definitely check it out. Well, we might be biased, but we think that this library is the best one ever anywhere, so. Well, I would have to agree. There's no <laughs> doubt about that. Yeah, it's been a wonderful event today. We're so excited about the stuff the library is doing over the summer for all ages. We're having 
having a great time meeting people and talking about what the library provides and really what the whole community provides. One of the things that's so special to me about this event is the community participation. Yeah. 25 different community vendors are out today mm -hmm. sharing what they do and what they offer. It's just amazing. Doors Open Peninsula is a true community event and PVLD was honored to have it recognized by all four cities of the hills with proclamations announcing today as Doors Open Peninsula Day. So thank you, a big round of applause to all four cities here on the peninsula. I'm delighted to be here representing LA County Supervisor Janice Hahn as the peninsula comes together to celebrate this momentous occasion. Little did those visionaries a hundred years ago know that this would become one of the most beautiful and spectacular places to live, work, and play, not only in LA County, but in the entire state and country. And we really want to acknowledge the library district and Jennifer and her team and the friends for their vision and leadership in putting this together. So we know that there's a lot of exciting things in store today. We hope that you'll enjoy all the very special and historic sites as you make your way through this beautiful, beautiful community. So on behalf of the supervisor, I'd like to present the Palos Verdes Library District, this commendation in commemoration of the Doors Open Peninsula event, celebrating 100 years. Congratulations, everyone. Good afternoon, everyone. John Kirkshank here, and I'm sorry our mayor, uh, Barbara Ferraro, is not here today, but I'm speaking on behalf of the city of Rancho Palos Verdes. Um, what's great about celebrating 100 years here in uh, Palos Verdes is that we get all four cities together uh, like we always do, along with the library district and our school school district, and we work together to put an amazing event like this today. I myself, I migrated from El Segundo South to be in the peninsula, and like many of you, the beauty of the peninsula is why we're here, and um, this hundred years, and today being the day where the first property was bought, was really incredible. So get your booklets like were mentioned, and make sure that you hit some of these highlights in Rancho Palos Verdes. Of course, the Ken Dida Civic Center, uh, the Nike missile silo, which many of you have probably never seen, but I heard it was packed there this morning. Uh, we also have the Hatano Farm, which is an amazing part of history on the hill. Uh, the Point Vicente Interpretive Center, where you can see and watch the whales. Terranea Resort, of course, we recommend people going there and spending lots of money. And then finally go to the Abalone Cove Park, where the Tonga Monument was mentioned earlier. It's a beautiful tribute. Uh, to the people that were, were here and, and laid, made, made this place a beautiful place where we celebrate not just our homes and our beautiful buildings and the car show that we talk about, but also the open space that we all celebrate, uh, certainly in the city of Rancho Palos Verdes. So with that, uh, thank you for having us here today and being able to participate, and congratulations to the Library District for putting all of this together. Well, happy birthday, Palos Verdes! <laughs> hundred years, that's quite a landmark. You know, as a fellow Palos Verdes resident, you know, I feel very lucky to be able to live on this beautiful land, this land that was, you know, originally occupied by the Tongva Gabrielena people for centuries, and then it was part of Mexico, then following that, all the, the, the Spanish uh, ranches, and I know a big part of the peninsula history are all the Japanese American farmers that were here. And uh, as a Japanese American, I'm particularly proud of, of that history uh, of the peninsula. And so I want to thank the Palos Verdes Library District, Monique, Jennifer, Rosa, the entire library district board for everything that you do to preserve and celebrate this wonderful history uh, to make sure that we all appreciate, you know, how lucky we are to be able to live on this land, this land that has so much rich history. Um, and so, on behalf of Senator Ben Allen and myself, we got this beautiful resolution uh, from the California Legislature to commemorate the 100th birthday of the Palos Verdes Peninsula. 
Thank you very much. Another great event here on the peninsula. This one I think so special. When you look at this photo behind you, a hundred years ago, what does that bring to mind? There's just so much history on the peninsula, but uh, you know, happy birthday to Pals Verdes, 100 years. I mean, I really appreciate the Pals Verdes Library District for uh, you know keeping that history alive and, and reminding all of us what a special place we live in and uh, you know how lucky we are to be able to uh, uh, live on the peninsula. Okay, we are now joined by Victoria and Danielle, and this is Penelope von Schweetz and Liberty Bell. And I know that you're out here here today for the event. Tell us a little bit about the Mini Therapy Horses and what you do. We have a nonprofit charity called Mini Therapy Horses and we have 10 horses in our program and we go to hospitals all the time. We go to schools. We go to Department of Children Family Services, helping children, Shriners Hospital, all kinds of different things. We're volunteers at the Sheriff's Department and the horses have wonderful healing qualities and they bring a lot of comfort and love to everyone they visit with. I was going to just ask you that. How long do you train with them because they're so well behaved? <laughs> well, Victoria gets them when they are weaned usually, um, which is like five to six months and then it's training every day of their lives pretty much and they have the personalities for it. They want to do it. They love being around people um, and they love just getting hugs and being out here and making a difference. Very sweet. Well, thank you so much for spending a few minutes with thank us. You. What a great, uh, what a great surprise! And uh, you guys are just going to have a good day out here today. It's great sharing our horses with the community here today. Shark Bait is a Girl Scout troop. We're a legacy troop, which basically means as girls leave, new girls come in. Um, and we are also a mariner troop, um, which means that we learn a lot about like boating skills, including knots, first aid, charting, everything like that. Um, and we also do a lot with backpacking. So we're actually going um, in a few weeks to... Uh, to an internet or on an international backpacking trip to Norway. Wow. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, like a big part of our program is like teaching girls like lessons that will stay with them forever. And so a big part of that is like skills and knots and things like that. So today we have here like a few things that kind of represent our troop. We have a knot board where people can learn some knots. We have this awesome like race that goes on where you can create make a boat and use different sails to see which ones go faster. And it's kind of and you can race your friends. So that's like the whole point we have here today. And so we try to have like a big balance of like fun and also like learning skills. So this is our actually the first Girl Scout troop that was started in the area and so it's like kind of the inspiration I guess for all the other Girl Scout troops that came. So Mrs. Williams, our Girl Scout troop leader, she's over there. She's our, she's the best person ever. Do we know what year this was? Um, yeah, this was 1950, 54, yeah. So yeah. And then this is us this year at um, our oh. competition. So yeah, we do, like, we do sailing, we do canoeing, there's um, rowing, we do knots, lashing, charting, so much stuff. And it's really a great way to like learn and experience things, so yeah. Tell us a little bit about your book. I know it's still sold all over the peninsula. Um, well, the book came out about five years ago and actually it's a trip through the peninsula from A to Z and it's all of the spots that families frequent and there's a checklist in the back so that kids love checklists so that when they see something they can check it off. And I've gotten a great response from teachers and it sells at Point Vincenti and um, it's just a fun project. You have other books as well, yes? Yes. Mm -hmm. I have four children's books, The Peacocks of Palos Verdes, Palos World, this book, and A Smile and Say Hi, and a coming-of-age novel, Stillwater. You guys are doing a great job.
remember, you can go to the library district and get the map and take the special tour anytime. All right, that will do it for today's show. Remember, you can also go to rpv50.com and find out what's going on for the city of Rancho Palos Verdes' 50th anniversary. I'm Maria Sorrell, and we'll see you next time around the peninsula. Oh, girl.